Welcome back. You're still watching The Globe. Now, a report from the United Nations Development Program in South Africa has found that female-headed households in South Africa are more likely to fall into poverty than male-headed households due to the COVID-19 pandemic. It's also found that the number of people living under the uh, upper and lower poverty lines have increased due to the pandemic. The report looks at specific and broad implications of the COVID-19 crisis across South Africa's society and economy with a particular focus on vulnerable groups. To tell us a little bit more about the study, I'm now joined uh, by the United Nations Development Programme Resident Representative in South Africa, Dr. Ayodele Odusola. Thank you so much indeed for joining us and welcome to the programme. Thank you very much, Peter. All right, so a lot of people have been experiencing much of what you found uh, in your study um, firsthand. We had this shock of COVID-19. When we went into lockdown, we didn't quite know what that would mean. Uh, but your study has gone in, done a deep dive, and uh, came up with some findings. Take us through in broad terms what you saw. Thank you very much, uh, Peter. Uh, the, the, the socioeconomic impact study of COVID-19 in South Africa is something that we have looked at to look at what are the implications on the economy, the people, and the well-being of the people on the ground. It, it's very clear that uh, the impact of COVID-19 on poverty is determined by gender, uh, by a uh, special location, whether you live in rural, urban area, your level of education and the numbers of uh, households, uh, as well as the form of employment, whether it is permanent job or casual workers. So these, these are the things which we consider to be very important. Mm -hmm. and that's why we found that uh, female-headed households are heavily affected by the impact of COVID-19, not only in terms of poverty, but in terms of income inequality. And uh, one of the things that we really found is that if you consider uh, a household of uh, just one child with one person working in urban areas, you discover that one out of four is likely, I mean, with education that is less than secondary school, likely to fall into poverty uh, uh, if it is male-headed household. But if it were to be a female-headed household in urban centers, it's going to be one of, out of three. But if you move to urban uh, uh, area, I mean, uh, uh, informal settlement and rural areas where the, the same level of characteristics but with a minimum of three children per household, you see a situation whereby seven out of ten are likely to fall into poverty. So this is one of the key revelations we have. And, and again, a, a major message is that those that are current, I mean, before COVID-19, they were considered to be people in the middle class. We realized that about 34% of those that were in middle class before COVID-19 struck in March are likely to fall into vulnerability and possibly into poverty. And this is one thing that we found to be very, very important uh, as, as on the basis of this study, about 2.1 million uh, South Africans that are considered uh, in the middle, uh, middle class level are likely to fall into poverty on the basis of COVID-19 or really fall, uh, come to the margin of the poverty line. Mm. Now, the one thing that is very clear on the basis of the founding we, we got is that it may take at least five years to, for the economy to return to pre-COVID-19 uh, before COVID-19 struck, or unless something very innovative is really done. And, right. and, and we think we'll, we'll talk about the economy of, just now. I just want to get back to how it's impacted uh, individuals. And I suppose in many ways, much of what you were describing talks to inequalities that have existed already. And that, uh, am I right in suggesting that the COVID-19 pandemic has really just accentuated that which we knew and that those that were already vulnerable uh, really just came to the fore more uh, as a result of this pandemic? 
Thank you very much, Peter. That, that reality. In fact, what we found is that the impact of the level of income inequality is dipping further. In fact, it, the, the impact on, the, on income inequality is far uh, worse than the impact on poverty. Uh, because most of the people that are affected are either in the informal sector uh, or those that are unskilled workers, those that are currently earning low are the those that are heavily affected. And most of them fall into non-essential services. And you then realize that most of the people that fall into what was categorized under essential services are those with uh, secondary school education and above. So the, the impact is more on the low spectrum of the ladder of income. And, and as a result of that, the gap between those that have and those that do not have is becoming wider. And the incidence is more on the black uh, South Africans relative to other, other categories of, of people, whether it's color or Indian or the white. So they have the largest incidence in terms of that. What, what we, 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 we found is that it has what they call the uh, point two three Gini index, meaning the gap is extremely wide. Mm. Wide in the sense that it deepened the already uh, a deep level of inequality in the country. So it, it shows that government needs to pay strategic attention to this, to make to making sure that those that are currently affected, especially those uh, that with that those that are living in rural areas. With, informal, uh, with, with casual workers, with those that are unskilled, we need to pay more attention to them because that is where the impact is heavily felt. And on the basis of this, the strategic intervention that the government must put in place should be able to address this particular gap. It shouldn't be a, a kind of equal level uh, kind of uh, social protection. It has to be something that takes into consideration the impact on the various categories of people that are affected by COVID-19. All right. So for our viewers on SABC3, a very good evening to you. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. We're in the middle of a conversation with uh, the United Nations uh, Development uh, Program a resident uh, representative in South Africa, Dr. Uh, Odosula. And we're talking about uh, a socioeconomic report that they've uh, just come out with, talking about the challenges that uh, South Africans are facing in the, in the midst of uh, the pandemic COVID-19. And uh, let's switch to the macro. Uh, you gave us an inkling just before uh, about how the economy is going to take time to recover unless something drastic happens. And you're looking at a, a five-year timeline. Yes. Uh, the pounding shows that uh, it, it, it will take at least five years for the economy to return to where it was before COVID-19. And uh, don't forget, the situation was, uh, was quite there end of uh, 2019 and early 2020, where the economy was almost in technical recession. And uh, don't forget again, uh, probably a week before the COVID-19 struck in South Africa, uh, Moody uh, downgraded the economy into a junk status, uh, it, it quit, quit really compounded the, 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 the opportunity for the economy to move in the right trajectory. So the, the, what is critical that which we're trying to really look at is that the government must need to think out of the box by making sure that efforts to rekindle the economy by making sure strategic attention is given to small-scale enterprises, uh, development and empowerment, and at the same time, reskilling, uh, reskilling uh, those that are in the informal sector or those that are heavily affected uh, to be making sure that they have skills that is extremely relevant to the economy. And these are the kind of things which will help to really address this issue of sluggish growth and at the same time to give opportunity for uh, the economy to grow faster and better. Uh, particularly, uh, the, what UNDP is currently doing is what can we do to turn this crisis into an economic opportunity? In fact, uh, our goal is to work with government to turn the crisis into uh, what, what we call uh, a, 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 a kind of economic strategy. Because the major lesson we got from COVID-19 is that it's showing that uh, our public health system as well as our economy is over-dependent on what is coming from outside the country. 
we need to really respond to these lessons by making sure that the economy is diversified by, pro by supporting the production of PPE in South Africa. Uh, we're currently working with informal tailors to be able to produce what they call quality masks that can be done. We, again, we're working with many other international actors, uh, especially the Singapore Center of uh, uh, Science, Technology and Innovation, which was a uh, UNDP uh, created center. We're currently looking at the opportunity of producing some of these sophisticated uh, medical devices, uh, including ventilators in the country, as well as diagnostic tests and two, two kits that can be produced in the country. And uh, that's part of what we're doing. And we're working with other global actors, particularly when it comes to technology access partnership well, with uh, the UN Technology Bank that is based in Istanbul. We're working with them to making sure that we work with uh, various departments, uh, Department of Small Business Development, as well as Department of uh, Trade, Industry and Competition. To All be right. able to Dr. Odusola, uh, unfortunately, now, we've run out of time. We're going to have to leave it there. But uh, people can access uh, this report on uh, your website, UNDP website, I believe. Yes. Okay, fantastic. We can uh, make that our bedtime reading for this evening. Thanks so much indeed for joining us and uh, bringing these uh, powerful insights uh, to us. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you very much, Peter. It's really a pleasure uh, discussing with you.